The tale of Olivia Lutaya, a single mother of two, begins here in Kanyogoga, Namuongo, which was the base of most of our political activity in service of the National Unity Platform. And it was here where she was abducted one rainy morning in 2021. On 8th May 2021, a 27-year-old mother of two, Olivia Lutaya, received a phone call demanding that she quickly comes to a police post in Namuongo, a suburb on the outskirts of the city. Upon arrival, she was whisked away by hooded men to a safe house in Bukoto. Thereafter, she was transferred to Chigo prisons and later incarcerated at Luzira prisons. She is being detained on charges of treachery and possession of ammunition, and only last week, she was arraigned before the general court-martial alongside 31 others. Lutaya, a Noob supporter, had early on been briefly detained after her arrest in Kalangala on 30th December 2020 with 29 others, including Bobby Wine's bodyguard, Eddie Mutwe. Is she a prisoner of conscience, caught in the crosshairs of Uganda's murky politics, or is there evidence to implicate her for the offences she is charged with? Behind the Iron Curtain of Luzira prisons, Lutaya recounts the circumstances of her arrest. Someone called me on the phone and said he had hired a border border to take him and his wife, who was in labor, to Mulago, and the border border rider had robbed them. The rider apparently had given them my number as his. I was concerned that there is someone out there using my phone number to rob people, so I asked the man to come to the police post near where I worked. I had a small boutique selling clothes, and we met there. Located about six kilometers from the central business district in Kampala, the Kanyogoga police post is a landmark in this bustling low-income community that straddles railway tracks and features dwellings made of rammed earth, wooden poles, and iron sheets. Braving the heavy downpour that morning, Lutaya did not know that she was being lured into a dragnet. They ordered me to enter the car and take them to Sanya, but promised to bring me back once I had shown them Sanya. When I entered the car, there were other men. Their faces were covered with masks and wearing black hand gloves. They were six in total and were armed. That's when I realized what was awaiting me. As they drove off, I saw my son playing near a trench and wondered if I would ever see him again. While in custody, Lutaya was forcefully compelled to lure her friends in a sting operation. They took away my phone and later gave it back to me and ordered me to call Sanya. It was at that point that they started accusing me of wanting to disrupt Museveni's swearing in. I called Sanya and he told me where he was. They went there with me and picked him up also. In the days and weeks that followed, Olivia's ordeal continued. Thankfully, I wasn't beaten, but I would hear them beating my male counterparts and asking them what Bobby Wine was planning. There was a police officer who protected me and warned the others not to lay a hand on me. I was in a cell alone. We were kept there for two weeks and later taken to SIU in Chirika. We spent another two weeks there. Following Lutaya's disappearance, her auntie, Sarah Nambi, also a resident of Kanyogoga zone in Namuongo, attempted to trace her niece. After a while, I called her phone and she answered and she reassured me that she would be back shortly. She told me to take care of Jeremiah. I called again a day later and many days thereafter for the next three months and no one answered. The Kanyogoga police told us it was military men who took Olivia, although they were in plain clothes attached to CMI and they were going to Bukoto. Lutaya was eventually produced in court and charged. We were taken to court and charged with being in possession of ammunition. Later, we were charged with treachery. They claimed to have found us with bombs, bottles, etc. After that, we were remanded to Luzira and others were taken to Chitalia. 
Those charges are fabricated. They have not shown us the so-called bombs. I don't know anything about it. We just hear about it. According to George Musisi, Olivia's lawyer, this case is a grave injustice and abuse of power by authorities. So they were charged with being found in possession of four bullets, yet the, the, the time of finding those bullets, they were in detention, in lawful government detention in Masaka. Musisi goes on to detail a litany of grievances. They spent about one month in illegal, in communicado detention. We didn't even know where they were until they were produced in court a month later. Uh, with the 31 others, some of many of whom she didn't even know. She had never met them before. Some were from Bali, others from Kawempe. So out of the group of 32 whom they are alleging they connived with, she knew about three of them physically. So it is just one of those cases that we use the law to abuse people's rights. Lutai and her 31 co-accused were initially charged with unlawful possession of ammunition. This offense is provided for in Section 3 of the Firearms Act, which states that subject to this act, no person shall purchase, acquire, or have in his or her possession any firearm or ammunition unless in respect of each such firearm he or she holds a valid firearm certificate. Section 3.2a further states that any person who purchases, acquires, or has in his or her possession any firearm or ammunition without holding a valid firearm certificate or otherwise than as authorized by such a certificate or in the case of ammunition in quantities in excess of those so authorized commits an offense and is liable on conviction to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 10 years or to a fine not exceeding 1.2 million shillings or both. The particulars of the offense state that between November 2020 and 12th May 2021 in the areas of Jinja, Mbali, Chireka, Nakulabye, Kawempe, Natete, Kampala, Lutaya and her co-accused were in possession of explosive devices which are ammunition ordinarily in the monopoly of the defense forces. Dated 4th April 2023, the amended charge sheet includes the offense of treachery, which section 129A of the UPDF Act defines as a person subject to military law who for any purpose prejudicial to the security or interests of Uganda infiltrates the defense forces or is an agent of a foreign power or of any force engaging in war or warlike activities against the government. On conviction, Lutai and her co-accused are liable to suffer death. According to the amended charge sheet, Olivia and her co-accused between the months of March and May 2021 in areas of Kampala, specifically Chiraka, Nakulabi, Kawempe, Natete, Nakasero, Jinja and Mbali, under a force called Balibali Group, engaged in a war or warlike activities against the government of Uganda. The particulars of the offense state that you recruited, trained, and unlawfully detonated explosive devices, ordinarily the monopoly of defense forces, onto motor vehicles and infrastructure in the aforementioned areas for purposes prejudicial to national security. In response to the charges, Musisi expressed frustration with the legal process. The trial only started recently, in 2023, and then the state says, no, we've held you for two years, uh, we inv finished investigations, but two years later you find that, uh, there are other charges that are produced. Highly placed sources who prefer to speak on condition of anonymity claim that there is an attempt to cajole the accused to accept a plea bargain by falsely implicating the new pleader Bobby Wine. On one occasion, during a break in court proceedings, the accused were offered their freedom in exchange for evidence pinning Bobby Wine. Lutai's predicament brings into the spotlight the continued trial of civilians in the general court-martial, which the Constitutional Court in July 2021 found to be unlawful in the case of the former Nakawa MP Michael Kabaziguruka versus the Attorney General. In his judgment, the late Justice Kenneth Kakuru postulated that the general court-martial's jurisdiction is only limited to trying service offenses specified under the UPDF Act only in respect of persons subject to military law. Persons subject to military law under the UPDF Act must exclude all those persons who have not voluntarily placed themselves under the jurisdiction of that Act, he argued. Section 119.1H of the UPDF Act stipulates that every person found in unlawful possession of arms, ammunition or equipment ordinarily being the monopoly of the defense forces is subject to military law. However, Justice Kakuru found Section 119.1H unconstitutional as it is inconsistent with Article 28.1 of the Constitution. All those persons not subject to military law 
and are currently being tried before any military court. We order that their cases be transferred to civil courts under the direction of the Director of Public Prosecutions within 14 days from the date hereof reads the judgment. This decision was appealed by the Attorney General, however, in Constitutional Application No. 5 of 2021, and as judgment is pending on the appeal, the Supreme Court ordered on 5th August 2021 that execution of and or giving effect to the orders and declarations issued by the Constitutional Court are stayed until the appeal is determined by the highest appellate court. Musisi explains the implications of the court ruling. The Attorney General appealed to the Supreme Court uh, in the case of Kabazigurupa, and the, the Supreme Court gave a stay, meaning that it allowed the General Court Marshal to continue trying civilians until the Supreme Court decides. The Supreme Court has not given a final pronouncement on the Attorney General's appeal. In December 2022, the Constitutional Court delivered another judgment in a case filed by a retired UPDF Captain Amon Biarugaba and a hundred others against the Attorney General, and in a majority decision of three to two, the justices held that under the 1995 Constitution, it is only civilian courts of judicature dressed with the jurisdiction. Critics accuse the General Court Martial of being akin to a kangaroo court, which does not adhere to the rigorous rules of evidence and criminal procedure, and where judges may act on the whims and fancies of their puppet masters. The army says that the general court martial is an impartial court that seeks to deal with hardcore criminals who threaten the security of the country by accessing arms, which is a monopoly of the UPDF. Brigadier Felix Kulaije, who is the spokesperson of the defense ministry and UPDF, declined to comment on a matter that is pending determination in the Supreme Court. Lutaya and her 31 co-accused are a diverse cast that includes 66-year-old Siraji Mudebo, a herbalist from Mbale, and 20-year-old Ronald Chijambo from Boyogerere. In their absence, their families have struggled to pick up the pieces, as Nambi reveals. So I tell people, especially those women like me, that we should act as if these children are dead and will look after their children. Those who will be freed will assume their responsibilities, but we should not lament. Where will our help come from? Justine Nakabugo is 61 years old and the mother of 38-year-old Abdullah Chintu, who was arrested in May 2021 on the day of President Museveni's swearing-in ceremony. Chintu was selling pineapples in Boyogedere Market and was arrested with eight others. He has three children. I am looking after one of them with what I make from selling charcoal at a stall while their mother also struggles with the other two. Noop helps us with school fees and a few other things. Mutesi Chisach, the mother of Musa Kagoma, age 25, who was also arrested in May 2021, narrates the ordeal she has gone through for the last two years after her son was jailed. My son has three young children. They all live with me, yet I have no job. Musa was a border border rider, but the mother says the motorcycle was also confiscated. Life is precarious for Nambi who lives in a two-roomed house with Lutaya's son. The walls caved in recently, but luckily no one was hurt, and she has just rebuilt them with the help of Noop, who donated building materials. She continues to care for Lutaya's seven-year-old son, who has struggled to come to terms with his mother's incarceration. It was an emotional reunion between mother and son. I think Jeremiah expected to be left behind with his mother, but when I told him it was time to leave, he protested. She in Nambi's view, her niece has been punished enough. She has been detained too long, three years. It is too cruel a punishment. The public outcry for Lutai and hundreds of other civilians who are being tried in the general court martial calls for a speedy and fair trial. This appears untenable as the Supreme Court is yet to commence the hearing of the appeal in the Kawaziguruka case, a concern human rights proponents fear that may result into a miscarriage of justice.